All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, here's the, I guess, our story now. We're going to talk about Amsterdam, in which I'm sure all of you guys are excited to hear about what Amsterdam is like. Um, obviously, in Amsterdam, there was a ton of bikes, which was the first thing that we found out pretty much right away, is that everyone bikes. Everyone from the age of like 65 to five years old, anywhere in between, bikes on these bikes, commutes it around, and they use them as commuter vehicles versus the North American style of looking at a bike as more of like a recreational uh, utility style of vehicle. Uh, that's how they look at it. They have big compartments on the side of their bikes that allow them to bring their files to work and their you know, athletic gear to the soccer practices and whatnot. And it was super cool to see uh, a, a large portion of the population biking around versus driving cars and the bikes get priority every, around everything. Even in the roundabouts, they've designed uh, bikes to have roundabouts. So the roundabout would have an inner circle, which would be the car circle. And then the uh, next outer circle would be the bicycle circle. And then the outermost circle would be the pedestrian circle. So it was very efficiently laid out in that the fastest moving traffic would move into the middle and the slowing moving traffic, whether it be walking or biking or scootering, would slowly start to swindle out to the outside of these uh, roundabouts. And in the countryside, they actually had designated lanes or like essentially like a sidewalk would separate the car area from the biking area and then another median would separate the biking area from the walking area, which I thought was super interesting. Um, so I guess the next thing we're gonna talk about other than biking around in Amsterdam, which I found was really amazing and had just a great time doing it while Jen was still learning a little bit about how to ride a bicycle and getting comfortable with it. I think the rest of us found it very stressful even just walking around Amsterdam, uh, having the bikes everywhere. So we decided to do that out in the countryside, which is where we were actually staying. We stayed in Vinkeveen, which is about a 30 minute uh, drive, or like a 30 minute train ride into the city um, on a nice lake country out in this smaller area of Amsterdam, which was super cool. And most of the days we'd get up and we would just essentially commute into Amsterdam uh, so we didn't have to pay the ridiculous hostel prices that were in Amsterdam. And we got a chance to step out and hang out at this really funky and cool kind of hippie hostel that essentially was just a bunch of old RV uh, camper vans that had been gutted out and turned into hostel rooms with an outdoor kitchen. And it was more of like a lake country hangout place for uh, youth people, young adults and youth people to come and hang out. And we were there not during the peak season. This was just the beginning of May. So it was, weather wasn't perfect all the time. So it wasn't super busy, but we definitely got some really nice days out there. And it was an absolutely phenomenal experience. Uh, so obviously we went into the city and we did try the Amsterdam specials, the, the brownies and the edibles and went to some of these, uh, what do you think, the coffee shops in Amsterdam and and checked out the red light district and all of that was kind of like overrated I would say it doesn't really surprise me why everyone goes to Amsterdam is to you know smoke some marijuana and and have some fun there doing those things and and for me I think it was very interesting to see what that kind of culture would be like over there compared to Vancouver culture in this similar area but it really wasn't that appealing there was no nature around Vondel Park was beautiful but there was no big amounts of nature to go and explore and be in um, and it was all very very urban amazing urban planning uh, and then the other experience we had in Amsterdam which Jen Mitch and Lisa unfortunately didn't uh, participate in was trying out some of their magic truffles which was essentially their version of like psychedelic mushrooms in uh, Amsterdam which is actually also a legalized drug that they've started to allow tourists to experiment with over there, which was really fun because we got to, to buy some of those, take those back out into the lake country, and we had a great day out in the lake country. It was blue skies, your typical fluffy uh, clouds, and 
and we just got to hang out on this man-made lake where they had these uh, lake developments on the man-made lake in, in Netherlands and they had uh, obviously there was no it didn't seem like it was a very high power motor was allowed to be on the man-made lake so you could use like a small boat to commute here and to and fro and then they also had these nice big uh, complex development kind of like a townhouse that was built into the lakefront country um, side which was absolutely phenomenal. So you sit there and you go, okay, I don't, I wasn't sure if there were, these were houses that people, like weekend houses that people in the city would come and visit to, or if these were houses that people actually lived in uh, full time. And in that sense, they lived on a lake and they had beautiful scenery around them. It was flat to bike everywhere. And they were only 30, 40 minutes out of the main city of Amsterdam, which was kind of a cool experience. And I, I think on that experience that we that I had with the truffles, it was really interesting to kind of explore and venture into that side of experiences in life. And I realized that kind of you can narrow everything down in the world to the time, energy, and matter, which was a kind of a, a cool way of looking at the world, which I still kind of keep with me in everyday life uh, today. I think it's really cool that these experiences you get this knowledge and you don't lose it. I don't have these breakthroughs and then go like, oh, like, ah, uh, that was a great idea last night, but tonight it's not no longer a great idea. I think uh, for myself, uh, throughout the rest of the trip, I really did start to look at everything in a sense of like time, energy, and matter. And I even look at money nowadays as there's no dollar value. I think it's more of just a freedom unit. It's the more, you know, positive flow you have in your bank account is a freedom unit. And if you lend your your money to your friends, you're essentially just lending the freedom that you worked really hard for to get and earn and you're just distributing it out or you're, you know, passing it on to the less fortunate who don't have the ability to gain as many freedom units per se as you do. Um, and I thought it was really cool to think of things and I started to think of things this way, uh, I would say, right around this Amsterdam time and period. And it was just a really amazing experience to have. Uh, on top of that, we got to go to the Reykjavik Museum, but it was super busy, so we didn't actually end up going in because I think it was a Saturday and we kind of just didn't time that properly. But it was quite funny because after we did that, we kind of did a nice walk into Vondel Park and into the Yale Town area, I would say like the more upper class area of uh, Amsterdam. And we were talking about how great it would be if there was like a Saturday supermarket or a fresh like farmer's market going on. And, as the words came out of my mouth, like we stumbled upon this little quaint uh, farmer's market and we were able to buy re some really good cheese and bread. It's probably some of the best cheese I actually had in all of Europe because we didn't really go hunting for good cheese after that, even when we were in Italy and stuff. Uh, and that was really cool. And then we headed back to, to the big park where it's like, I Amsterdam sign is in front of uh, the Reykjavik Museum. And we saw this like, two older fellas with a younger girl, like probably in her, you know, she's probably 12 years old and the other, older guys were 30 or 40 or so. And, uh, and very quickly Jen and I realized that these people were there as complete scam artists and they were doing some like extravagant things in order to distract people so that they could take their good, uh, their bags, their phones, whatever it may be. And we actually caught some of it on footage and took some photos and all. Obviously there's some of the photos there uh, above this post. All of these, these, the one guy's dressed as a clown and then the girl's dressed as like a little cute clown and one guy's in a wheelchair. And essentially what they would do is they'd put, they'd get their briefcase and they'd put it down in front of, in front of the person, in between the person and the objects that they were trying to pickpocket. And they would open up the briefcase and pull out a bunch of magic toy things and in the meantime there was someone putting in all of these items like their purses, their cell phones, their bags into their suitcase, would close it, perform the magic trick and would disappear. And they would go away obviously if they were successful at pickpocketing these things and it was kind of like crazy to think at that point it was a complete switch of mindset going okay we gotta look out for these like street entertainers. Yeah there are definitely some genuine street entertainers out there and they do a really good job of providing you with the show, but at the same time, you have to keep your eye out. These other people who are out there to scam you and take your stuff and, and leave you 
with nothing. So that was kind of an interesting experience to see uh, hand on hand what was going on and luckily no one ended up having anything stolen but you really did get a good sense of what was going on there. Uh, other things in Amsterdam would be the biggest, the coolest thing I started to realize was this was the commencement of our Eurorail journey. So once we leave Amsterdam we are actually going to be now doing all of our journey on the European train system which was something I was really looking forward to and uh, we'll talk more on that next time uh, about what the train system was like getting from Amsterdam over to Vienna where we ended up going to next. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this brief uh, discussion about Amsterdam. I really encourage everyone uh, to go to Amsterdam and see how really modern and progressive their whole lifestyle is and how urban everything is. Obviously they, they have a bit of an advantage because everything is flat over there unlike uh, us over here in North America, especially in uh, Vancouver with all the mountains and stuff. But it was really cool to have a flat landscape. You could really just bike anywhere pretty effortlessly with a nice convenient lock, lock on the back of the bike that essentially locked itself so you didn't have to carry your bike around or your lock around. And there were so many bikes that no one stole them anyways. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this post and uh, I can't wait to hear from you guys and uh, hope you guys enjoy the photos as well. Bye-bye.